I have dyslexia, anxiety, ADD, depression. So quite a few. <laughs> anxiety, social anxiety, PTSD, OCD, ADD, major depressive disorder. Um, and I've like struggled with like disorder eating, so not like an official eating disorder, but like just yeah. I have an anxiety disorder and uh, gender dysphoria, and then a bunch of other things that are we're working to get diagnosed, but aren't diagnosed yet. <laughs> ADD has definitely affected my relationships, especially with like friends and stuff like that, like forgetting to meet up and then getting like really mad at me. And anxiety has as well, like trying to like go out with friends and stuff like that and getting really anxious and not being able to do the stuff that they do. Like I'm a really out there person, but sometimes it just hits me. And people seem to get like really annoyed about it and being like, why can't you just come and do this stuff? And it's like, cause I have mental illness and I'm freaking out right now and I can't. So I've lost some relationships over it. So yes. I think, well first being in an art school just helps with that in general because you have, you learn more as you go and I think one of the big ones for me is like singing and playing ukulele and or guitar depending on what I'm doing and also just like designing stuff and expressing myself that way. All the research around education tells us that if somebody's not happy or somebody's not feeling safe in a class, you could be the most brilliant teacher in the world and wouldn't learn a damn thing. So I repeat, my answer is yes. So it's hard to find ones that are healthy that work for you and aren't like addictive as self-harm can be because that's still something that I struggle with. It's very difficult to separate the two things. It's very difficult to focus academically when you're struggling with something in your own mind or something in your home that's affecting how you're feeling. I'm not sure of, uh, there's a whole uh, continuum of what it means to be trained, I think. Just to be a caring adult uh, and um, so the students are know you're someone who who isn't only interested in math or science or dance or like that you you actually are interested in who the students are that's a big help um yes i do how i started coming out about my mental illness was coming out to my friends instead of family because i was scared of the judgment about my family but not about my friends It's hard to say. I mean, I'm a big believer that social media and phone use is is having an effect on student mental health. Uh, it's that it's a very complex coming together of a lot of factors. Um, but as somebody who's been teaching for 16 years, and I've I've seen the before smartphones hit the scene to now. Um, uh, I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen students that are, are, I feel, students seem to be more, funnily enough, you've got all the social media, I feel people are more isolated than ever. I think social media like helps and hinders my mental, mental state because it can be addicting and there's like, it can cause me to compare myself to people or to, um, you know, think that like, oh, these people have so many friends, they're so much better at me than like things that I like to do and like stuff like that. But it also helps because like even as some, someone with social anxiety, but even some people that don't have it, like I've made so many close friends through social media and, that I would have never made otherwise. And I would never like trade that for anything. And these are people that have helped me through so much. and. I feel like it's kind of worth it in a way sometimes, but it also depends if you use it in a healthy way or not. I think, like, the best analogy to describe it, like, in terms of, like, 
anxiety would be like you're sinking and you like if you're having like a panic attack like you're sinking in a pool and you can't like you can't no one can hear you and you don't know when it's gonna end and for like depression I think it would be more like there's like a heavy weight over you all the time and it gets heavier or lighter depending on if there's like a good or bad day. The biggest, the biggest challenge, especially in a school like this where we have so many students is somebody doesn't show up or somebody's work falls off uh, or they stop paying attention or they stop uh, submitting things. It's easy to just be like, well, another student who's not working hard enough or is not trying. And I think to answer one of the answers to your question is trying hard to remember each person has their own unique problems. Each person is coming from their own unique context and we can't remember that enough and it's really hard, hard to sometimes. The thing that I think is most important for teachers to always keep in mind is what we teach students is not nearly as important to them as all the other things going on in their lives. Like, a mental health challenge is kind of like completely blocks everything else in your life because yeah like I said you, you can't get rid of your brain or make it stop thinking so yeah it's, it's like it's like a big wall stopping you from doing things. Well I think it's interesting that we're here having this conversation that you guys brought it up it's something you must have been thinking about. I don't think five years ago even, there would have been a group coming in to say, hey, could we talk about mental health? I don't think so. So that could mean two things. We have more mental health issues now, uh, or that we're more comfortable, hopefully it's the latter, that we're more comfortable uh, saying, yeah, we should, uh, we should talk about it and we should see if we can uh, improve things.